Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paula's Soapbox Live. My guest tonight is an actress, writer, producer, director, singer. No, I'm not a director. You're not no. a director? <laughs> the other stuff. You directed yeah, before, that right? Yeah. yeah, hi. Well, in short, she is the multi talented creator and star of the web series Classic Alice. So please hey, welcome babe. to the show, Kate Hackett. Nice to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming. I mean, I know that you're, just from what I read about you, you're, like, busy all the time, so. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> but no, I mean, this is part of, you know, this is part of the busy, so it was really, I'm, I'm very thrilled to be here. Yeah, well, I'm glad to be, that you were able to make it. So, I, I think I've told you before, and I'm sure you read in the review that I did of Classic Alice. Um, I love everything about this show. I love the the look and uh, the casting, the chemistry of the casting. Everything is just seems like it came together. Um, so, just for people who maybe haven't heard of it, just give like a brief like description. Sure. Of the show. Um, so very briefly, it's this girl gets a bad grade on a test. And in order to, like, prove to her professor and herself what, that she can, like, identify with speakers and she's not really um, as, like, you know, rigid as, as he claims she is. She's living her life according... Sorry, my cat is over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, living her life according to different classic novels. So she's making the same choices, or roughly the same analogous choices, uh, the, as the main characters in these books. Um, so the first one we did was Crime and Punishment, mm -hmm. which if you've never read, you ought to do. Uh, she, instead of murdering someone, spoiled it! It happens in the first, like, two pages. Uh, right. <laughs> instead of murdering anyone, she steals a test. And so I think really, this is not a brief synopsis at all. What we <laughs> wind up going into <laughs> is more okay. of... Um, <laughs> more about the themes of the book than necessarily, like, a strict, you know, now this happens, now this happens, modernization of anything. So we do kind of both. There are two cogs whirling. Yeah. So. Well, and the first thing that, that Alice wanted to steal was um, nail polish. Top, top coat, coat only. Not even nail polish. Right. And, yeah. and then she decides to steal a test. Mm-hmm. So the, the, that's the first season. The, right, the first season follows yeah. along with... With each, call each book that we do a season, just which might be confusing for you guys, but when I was writing it, it was much easier to just kind of chunk it up like that. Um, right. there, there's a big arc, and then there are little arcs in, in the book, so like everything kind of plays into each other, and it was very tangly to write. Like I've got, I showed Tony this the other day. I've got this like huge sprawling uh, plot line outline thing that just has, mm -hmm. like, it's color coat. It's crazy looking. Um, so in order to keep myself from being like, oh, my God, I just, every little, every book was a season. So that's yeah. how we're doing it, which is, and, and, everyone's, like, super confused by it. but And and now you're doing uh, Pygmalion. So you're on that right now for Pygmalion. Pygmalion. Yeah. <laughs> we just, yeah. Just wrap that one up uh, today, I guess. Um, yeah. So, mm, Next week, Tuesday, we start The Butterfly, which was picked by the fans. So yeah. that was cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you what the next book was, so that's I'm it's glad not. that you're doing more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how did you come up with the concept for this show? Because it's so unique. and um, You know, that's so funny because I feel rather like I've, like, hey, Lizzie Bennett, here's yeah. another one. So uh, it, it doesn't feel super unique to me, especially because we're also, our source material, uh, it's like classic novels, but um, the the idea was originally, I was contacted by a company who wanted to set up a YouTube network aimed to promote teen and youth reading habits, and I was mm -hmm. like, that sounds great, that's super up my alley, and uh, they wanted me to host, like do a hosting gig on this. And I was like, oh, suddenly not up my alley. Just, it would be something like, hey, if you guys liked Twilight or whatever, you would also like this classic novel. So like Dracula or some, something like that. So we'd get kids from, you know, pop literature into mm -hmm. something a little bit m m deeper. Yeah. Um, and they asked me to do that. And I was like, that sounds cool, but I'm an actor. I want to... You know, I want to I want to have a narrative, and um, so I pitched to them. I was like, "What if we kind of bridge the gap a little bit? What if we do kind of a 
a narrative style show where like a vlog thing so you get that feeling of um, of just the hosting but also there's something going on and they were like yeah that sounds cool like Lizzie Bennett and I was like Tia <laughs> um, so they said yes do it and I wrote a pilot but I didn't want to just gank uh, Bernie, sorry, I got an email. That's my email sound, guys. Uh, I didn't want to just, just steal that format, even though I mean it's it's great because it's cheap and it's easy or whatever. Um, but I also wanted to like I had this cool idea of expanding the world out, and it would be a mockumentary, and this kind of Abed from Community kind of character would follow Alice around, and he totally this became Andrew, but he wasn't originally. Um, any kind of love interest or anything. He was just like some weird friend and uh, there wasn't really a love interest in the first draft. So I sent them this draft with like a classroom, there was like a sassy teacher, it was just much bigger. And they were like, hey, yeah, this is hilarious, but, and I went, damn, darn it, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they, okay. they asked to rewrite it vlog style, so I did, and then I said yes. I was like, great, go write six more, okay. And I got started, like, I outlined it, and they called me, and they said, hey, uh, the company's going a different way, like, they're not, we're not doing this anymore, we, you know, this happens all the time, like, people get a different job, they have to focus on that, so this pet project gets kind of put aside, but, but they said, you can, if you, if you want, you should totally make this, and I'm like, oh, man, so I sat on it, because in my heart of hearts, I still want to do a mockumentary, I think uh -huh. it's just so much more fun, like, to go out so that you're not in one spot the whole yeah. time. Um, so I sat on it and I tried to like figure out, so I made a pro-con list of like, do it, do it one way or the other, decided to just make it, make it the vlog thing, and uh, off it went. Yeah. And it's the origin story of Classic Alice. Right. Well, <laughs> it, you know, it works either way, and I, I can understand from an acting standpoint, especially why you would want to do like a mockumentary style, you know, to kind of get yeah. out of that space. Get out of that but, space. You can also, it lets the camera, like, we kind of, we busted a little bit out of it w with introducing our unseen intern this season, mm -hmm. the Nathan, because the oh, camera yeah. can move now. Yeah. So, like, if you look at, um, I forget what, I think it's like 205, is that the dance episode? Where they're, like, going, I think it's 205, uh, whatever, sure whatever what the dance one is, when Ewan and Alice are starting to kiss, the camera comes closer, and so you get this much more flattering angle of my face, which is nicer, <laughs> as opposed yeah. to, like, dead, dead profile, which is not, not a good angle. Aww. Um, but yeah, so, like, having it, and also just having, you know, outside things happen, like, Meeting new people is fun, and right. getting finding a way to get other people into our apartment, right? Like That's narratively, was really difficult. Like it I becomes why that would be a problem, right? Like these people just walk in, and you're like, yeah. hey, it's like, hey, I'm here. Like, uh, I guess it was Tuesday's episode when Kara comes in with the the tablet and the picture, and it's like, you know, she just. She kind of walks in and she's like, oh, I didn't know you had seen that. I hadn't seen that yet. And yeah, yeah so I can that, understand why it actually was less. When Caro's walking around in the rooms, it's a little bit less awkward because she lives there. So it's like, right. okay, you know, all right. But but when sometimes we have, like, we introduce uh, Reed Cox. She's, she plays Regan, uh, who's Alice's cousin. We introduce her. And... For a little while, it's like, okay, yeah, it makes sense that she's there, but, like, there, there's one or two times we were like, um, why is she still here? <laughs> right. You have to have a reason for her to be there, so it makes sense to in the story. In her, so, yeah. her apartment, in her home, like, it's, it's one thing to like, meet somebody for coffee or whatever, but it does run into, like, why are these people constantly, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, um, I hadn't thought of that, but I can see where that would be. I'm gonna watch it and just be like, "That was terrible." Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's just a, it's it's something. There are a lot of things that you have to kind of creatively overcome with this format, mm -hmm. which is yeah. an interesting challenge. Sometimes it's frustrating because you're like, "Oh God, why can't we just go outside?" Right. But, yeah, because then you could create different scenes, and like you said two of the characters can meet for coffee or whatever, so, right. yeah, and creatively, like, I can see. I would not want to watch Andrew and Alice try to watch a movie. Right? <laughs> right? Super right. adorable. 
<laughs> well, it seems like Alice and Andrew are getting closer. Uh, so, um, yeah, it seemed like that on Tuesday's episode. Like, there was, they had a moment there. Yeah, we have, we have moments. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. You don't want to say anything? Yeah. You. Well, you know, I, I would ask if they are ever going to get together, but I'm not sure no. I want to know. So, no. And that, that would be you a major spoiler. I'm sorry. I don't think you're right for me. For right. A right. It, <laughs> um, well, I, I don't want to get away. But, I mean... Him. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I, don't, I, I think you, if people aren't following the social media, that's kind of like... I don't know. I think a lot is happening on there. We've got our transmedia producer and I sit down every two to three weeks and, like, bang out all these tweets and all these crazy pictures. And, like, there's a lot of extra stuff that's... Right. You, know, you, you do have a lot of extra stuff for the show. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that because all of your characters have their own uh, Twitter pages to follow. Yes, so. they do. To, to follow and maintain. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. That would uh, get complicated, I would think, with having to, to try to maintain I mean, all of those. It's... I. We've had to bring on a couple of people to do some of the, like, busy work, like, archiving it and stuff like that, mm -hmm. the, like, thankless tasks. Right. Um, what we do is we we schedule all the tweets. So it's not like I'm sitting here at my computer constantly tweeting mm -hmm. to myself. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it is a lot. There are a lot of threads, you know, that we have to make sure. That's why I have that gigantoid outline. Um, a lot of little things that you have to kind of trace yeah, and, and even on the uh, Classic Alice website, you have the college has its right. own link. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like you created this whole world yeah, online. That, I, mean, I remember being my audience, right? Like, I remember being a college-age girl, and that, that stuff's fun. Like, when you're... The thing you like feels kind of real, and, like, you can play in it. That's mm -hmm. fun, for, especially for girls who read, um, girls who like immersing and stuff like that. And, I, I, like, I say this like I'm not one of you, but I totally am. Um, so having having that extra kind of thing is, is just fun to play in. And we did some – we did a couple of things. Like, obviously, obviously Lizzie Bennett did it. Obviously Emma did it. Like, they, they both have, you know, websites and worlds and whatever – um, right. We put a message board on the Veilton site for students, so you can role play within that world. And there's like one spot that you can go to. It hasn't been super used. I think people aren't really quite sure what to do with it, which What's is totally the, fair. But we mm -hmm. put it there just like in case that was a thing that you guys wanted to do. Right. And then um, we also have the podcast, which yeah. I don't think anyone else has done. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the podcast. It's it's Kara, yeah. the character Kara. It's her yeah. podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what is that about? What is it like? And, uh, so Kara's podcast is, I mean, I guess in world you can kind of treat it like her college radio station. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's a, she's a math major and a music major. So she has a double major and those two things actually go very closely together. Um, mm -hmm. it's a lot of math and music and vice versa. So she, uh, she DJs on the campus and whatever. Like she's she's got this whole musical side of her that we don't see very much of. And I love music. I grew up singing opera and uh, you know lots of classically trained stuff. So I wanted that side to come into this. Uh, uh -huh. I feel like it's a little underserved with the literary web stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but music is obviously so important to so many people, and it touches you in crazy ways. Whatever. Um, so we gave her, actually Dana turned to me at some point, it was really funny, Dana was like, Dana, Dana worked on Welcome to Sanditon, and mm -hmm. Jay Bushman and I met, because I was like, I need someone for this, and he and I met, and he went, wow, this is more complicated than I can do, let me give you Dana's number. So she and I met, and apparently she's friends with my little brother, which was wacky, <laughs> isn't that weird? <laughs> so the small world, uh, we started Not. working together, <laughs> we started working together, and uh she, uh, there's ice, hang on, just kidding. Um, <laughs> she turns to me at one point, as though this is going to take a lot of pitching, so she turns to me and she goes, okay, um, what if 
Kara had a podcast. And I think she was expecting, like, some kind of fight, but I was like, no, that sounds great. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. So we, uh, we wrote to the podcast for her and had Elise come swing by and kind of bang them all out. And uh, they're all, they follow the narrative of the show so that there are, like, you know, it's not like you're whipped away. You know, she does talk about things that have happened that week um, because, obviously, the, the show is the main beast or whatever, so it serves that. Um, but you get music recommendations, which I love doing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And she and we play music on the show, so like you can you press play and she'll she'll be like so blah 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 happened and yada 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 and here's this song that kind of makes me think of it and we'll play the song and so on. So it's it's every Friday, right? The it's every Friday, Friday at nine. nine. Yeah. Every Friday at nine. And, and then, then Tuesdays and Thursdays is the new episodes of Classic Alice. Right. So right. You've, you've almost got of... the entire week covered. <laughs> yeah. Take that, everyone else. Right. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think on Monday, Monday, Wednesday. On Mondays, after um, after each book finishes, I think we're gonna try to do bloopers on those Mondays. So we'll see yeah. if that all pans out. So um, that would be this Monday upcoming. I, I like how it is. Um, you've got it set up in a way where the audience can kind of read the books that you are um, living, that Alice is living her life through while the show is going on. So that was you know, it's that was important to me. That was really kind of um, I'm, I, to encourage reading. You can't just be like info dump. Here's here's a thing. Now go and read it on your own. Like now it's kind of a book club sort of. Like they can read and go. Wait a minute, Kate, you missed an entire chapter, and I can be like, I know, but I don't right. have t- <laughs> or whatever. Like they can they they. It means they're more involved when they when people start kind of arguing with like what you've done. It means they're really excited about it. Um, it makes it a more interactive experience. So yeah, um, and so like everybody's kind of figuring out what's happening at the same time, and everybody kind of realizes like, oh wait, this isn't gonna go well at the same time. Right. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, I like that aspect of it. Um, so from what I read about you, it sounds like you are um, a lot like Alice. Is that a fair assessment? So. There was a quiz floating around when we were doing the uh, Kickstarter that was like, which classic Alice character are you? I took that quiz. Who did you get? I was Kara. Me too. <laughs> so you're um, most like Kara. <laughs> that's what the quiz said. I'm sure there there are definitely like snippets of Alice for sure, like pro con listing, you know, right. everything and um and school. I liked school a lot. I obviously like reading. Um. Yeah, yeah. But I don't what? think I'm quite as oblivious to people having a crush on me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alice has no clue about the the Andrew thing. It's just yeah, it's it's funny to watch. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I think you could also watch it with the interpretation that like she does know. She just doesn't want to acknowledge yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can go both ways. Um. So. Yeah, you uh, you we talked a minute ago about the you have two shows a week, and one is a regular episode on Tuesdays, and then you have the confessionals on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. So, what was the um, the thinking behind having oh, the confessionals? I have no idea. I was not part of that process at all. Like, I showed up to set one day, and they were like, "Hey, we got film confessionals," and I was like, "What? Right. <laughs> what are those?" <laughs> And they, uh, I think it, I think the second day I got uh, a Google Doc with like all the things. But remember, we're in the middle of shooting. I'm in every single scene except the Andrew things where he's in his bedroom. But we shot those all at the same time. But so I'm in every single scene. I have, I'm not kidding. I have something like 120 pages of dialogue to memorize in <laughs> six, like two, over two weekends. Uh, most of it monologues. For me, oh, so, wow. so my team was like, "We're doing this thing," and I was like, "Sure, you are." <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, so they did share the Google Doc with me, but I was like, I I acknowledged that I received it. I was like, I put it up on my computer, and I was like, I, I just brushed through it, you know, and I was like, mm, I, okay. So anyway, <laughs> so I just did not have time to figure out what they were doing. Um, all I knew was that actors would disappear into a room and then come back out. Like, that's all I knew. And the last, 
<laughs> After the last shot of the last day, they were like, Kate! Ugh! So I went and did however many I do all at once. Um, very tired. <laughs> like, I wasn't sure what, I had no idea what, where we were. It was like, they, they would say, okay, now this is between, you know, 501 and 502, and this is what's going on, and go. And I was like, <sighs> Wow. They, they had written questions. Well, they had written questions like how to talk about you, how you feel about blah, and mm -hmm. I would be like, oh, God, I don't even remember when did we shoot this. <laughs> I <Right. have> no <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, but but they've been really cool. Like I hadn't seen, I had not seen any of the other actors. Um, I hadn't seen them. I had no idea what they said. Uh, a lot of it's improv from everybody. You know, there's kind of a skeleton, a guide of of what to say, but right. a lot of it was like you know, whatever kind of comes into your brain. Uh, so it's it's kind of cool. It's also like, wait, can we play that card yet? Do they? Yeah, no, that's fine. Right. right. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's a really cool, um, it adds a lot to the show, I think. Cause oh, it's that's great. Like, I'm actually to hear those. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, you know, uh, the show is vlog style, and then you've got these confessionals, so it, it fits, I think, so. It's kind of like, um... Like, like a reality show, I guess. Like those old reality shows where right. they would show whatever's happening, and then somebody would sit and be like, "Oh, I can't believe this!" Right, like a uh, real world or something like that. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. So, um, how do you go about choosing which novels you're gonna represent in the show? It's such a process. So there's like kind of a pain in pain in the butt criteria for that, like, mm -hmm. they have to be public domain, they have to be uh, books, it's helpful if they're books that I already know so that I don't have to, sorry, go and read them, um, I don't know why, I'm like, what could I, what could I do next? Um, it could, they also have to have, their main character has to make a choice. Mm -hmm. The main character cannot have things happen to so like Candide probably wouldn't work. Because mm -hmm. it's just things happening, and this guy being like, nope, this is great. Right. So, I mean, I guess, actually, I, she could kind of, like, just blindly decide that everything is wonderful. But again, like, I don't know. It, so, it's a little bit hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially hard. since you're not, you're, you're kind of in your apartment, so. <laughs> that too. It would be hard to be affected by outside things a lot. I I'm trying think. to think of, like, what. The clock could fall over behind her. She's like, nope, it's the best of all possible worlds. The, like, camera right. could shatter. Best of all possible worlds. Um, right. <laughs> it'd be the shortest, the shortest season. It would be one episode. Right. <laughs> like, what happens at the end? Like, his, at the end, I think everything, let's find out. Come here. Somewhere on there. Um, everything turns out fine, I think. Like, he winds up, she gets... I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so it's something that they have to make a choice. They have to take an action. So like mm -hmm. hero quests are great um, because they decide to go on this journey. Mm -hmm. um, whatever. Uh, decided, <laughs> decided to murder something. Like, which is usually, which is actually kind of weird. Like crime and punishment fit very perfectly because he sat down one day and was like, I'm better than everyone else. I should mm -hmm. kill somebody. And right. Alice sat down one day and went, I'm better than what this guy thinks. I should steal a test. Yeah, so it right. worked very well. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, but, yeah, the, the, so, the, like, what is it? Uh, public domain, choice, and um, and then we also, we I also uh, took great pains to find things that weren't all downers, which was difficult. Right. Um, Classic literature. There's a lot of right? God, you guys. Uh, so I, I tried to like have a couple. So if there's a a season that ends on a down note, I would try to pull it back up before we went back down again. So mm -hmm. um, season one, season one was uh, more tightly written, I think, because it was so much smaller. Like the other ones, the burn is a little bit longer for some of the stuff. But mm -hmm. in season one, you start up here. And it's like this descent, and you end, like, down here. So right. this season I pulled it back up, 
and we kind of went, it was a little bit similar. This next one is a little bit more upbeat um, on the yeah. whole. But it's also only two episodes, so we oh, <laughs> can't yeah. well, that too quickly. And have you already shot those? Or yeah, you... everything's shot. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything's shot, which was, there's some comments on the YouTube, on the YouTube, on, on, on the, the on the videos. Um, yeah. Someone was like, Someone said something like, this doesn't make sense. It feels like the writers just went and heard the comments from everybody and, and like, did twisted this and whatever. And I was like, no, no man, we're super shot. We shot months ago. Like, I, I haven't written anything. Um, yeah, well, I think that some people just like to, to leave negative comments. They've you know, actually just, been overwhelmingly positive, the right. comments. Most of the I ones know, that I, I've seen, yeah, have been positive. Super positive. Um, and I think it's good to get... At some point, you're going to get a negative comment. Like, you have to. There's so not. many people watching. Someone's going to be like, nah. Um, yeah, not for me. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Um, and if they're commenting on it, like, it usually means they've got some interest. They'll, they'll be back. Like, mm -hmm. if, they could, if they're bothering to say something, they'll still come back. Um, right. But, yeah, no, the, it's a bit, I mean... I forget sometimes that YouTube is full of just like, what, what, are you, what is she wearing? Boo, take it off or whatever. Um, right. With this this community because it's so positive and like, you're so pretty. And I'm like, yeah, what? Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so I'm, I, that's been kind of fun. Like usually, you know, they tell actors like, don't read the comments, which I agree with, but not for these, I think. For these, it's right. totally fine. Well, and that's easier said than done, too, I mean, because you kind of want to see the praise, but at the same time, you don't want to mm. see the negative, so... As an actor, I don't care. Like, I'm, I'm not going to read them. As the person who's going through and um, replying or uh, just to, like, get an idea of where things are, because, you know, bigger picture stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it's... I do. It's hard to keep up now. The first episodes, like the first six, I could reply to every single comment in character right. from Alice and Andrew. I can't do it anymore. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, that's good. That means that, the, you know, you're busy with the show and the show is doing yeah. well, so. It, yeah. That's a, that's a I good mean, thing. I mean, that's great, but I feel bad. I'm like, sorry, guys, we replied 30 seconds too late. Right. I'm already signed off now. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely great. getting a lot of attention, and I noticed that um, on the Reading Rainbow site, Yay. you are talked about on the their blog, which is, that's a pretty big deal, I think, yeah, to, really to be cool. mentioned by that. So how did I, that come about? Um, I think we must have, like, I'm sure we reached out to them, and they, they saw the show, and they watched it, and the woman who runs the blog, her name is Jenny, she, she really liked it. And so she was like, can we do pieces on you guys? I'm saying, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, me. <laughs> of course. So uh, we've, you know, kind of established a nice little camaraderie with them, um, which has been really, really fun. And it's possibly the biggest achievement that I've sent home to my mom. <laughs> like, she read that one and was like, oh, that's cool, <laughs> instead of like, okay. Right. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, that, did you watch that show, uh, growing of up, or, yeah? Of course. Uh, yeah. I was more of a Wishbone fan, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, we watched, I was only allowed to watch PBS, or whatever right. it is, uh, yeah. yeah, um, I think it's PBS, yeah. So, that was kind of it for me, it was either Reading Rainbow, Wishbone, Sesame Street, 321 Contacts, which was not on for very long when I was a kid, but they yeah. had the show called MathNet, which I thought was the best. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that one. I remember, um, well, obviously... No one remembers was, that show. Nobody. I, I, yeah, it's it must have been one of those, like, not... Super not cool. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> My first crush was Bill Nye the Science Guy. Yeah, so, right. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, well, you know, you mentioned earlier that, that you read a lot of books, and mm -hmm. uh, I read that you uh, your Harry Potter collection is, is taking up your kitchen space. I can show it to you, I think. Let's see. Can you... I think you'd have to, like... 
Can you see, like, in there? I don't think you can. It's it's there, yeah. It's, like, on this shelf in my kitchen. Right. Um, uh, so, yeah. Because I have nowhere else for it to go. Right. So I can assume <laughs> that you're more of a traditional book person yeah. rather than tablet. Um, my mother, like, she doesn't know what to do with it. So, first of all, they started this. My parents, <laughs> if we went to, there's a store... There was this local store called Zany Brainy, and it was like uh, edutainment. So all the toys were educational, and there was a huge section of books. Mm -hmm. And this was our toy store. That's where we went for toys. <laughs> so uh, if we if we went, my parents would be like, "You can't get anything. You're not allowed to buy anything. You can't like we're not buying anything today." I'm like okay, okay, but if I came back with a book and was like, "Can I just get one book? Can I get a book?" The right. books would always get a pass. Right. They'd be like, all right, yes. So it could always get a book, even if it was a no toys kind of thing. So fast forward to this. I mean, you can't even see half of it. Um, I, I Like, I can't go into a bookstore. I'm not allowed. I will buy things. Right. Um, and my mom got me an iPad hoping that I would start using it. And I just I can't do it. I like, the, I like the feel. I like the smell. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a lot better to have an actual book in your hand. I, I think, like I mean, I, I've, I've run out of space for my books, so a lot of them are on my iPad now, but, you know, regular books, there, you, you know, there's just something about them that the, the electronic <laughs> devices can't compete with. I'm sorry, what? Well, I write in them and, like... Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Put notes in the margins or highlight or whatever, and yeah. I'm guessing you have to do that, especially now when you go back and review some of these books for the show. So, um, sometimes I don't think I've actually written in the books for the show. I either like know them well enough, or I mm -hmm. you know look up a quick synopsis online or something yeah. um, if I need to. Um, yeah. If I'm pulling a quote, because there are a lot of that's another thing. The show has a lot of literary references mm -hmm. uh, and quotes that are either in the book that we're doing or they are from another book or whatever. Like, I think she says um, she doesn't want to be... No, no, no. He, ran, he, like, disappeared like some kind of compusin, and that's from uh, Great Expectations. That's the guy that ditched Miss Havisham. So, right. like, some of those I just remember. Some of those I'm like, oh, crap. And I'll just look it up really quickly and be like, all right, <laughs> okay. Right. Well, um, it's, you know, it's easy to forget some of the details. Um, you know, you, you might remember the general story, but it's it's easy over time to forget the details and also... Yeah. But you can Google everything now, so, like, all right. I had to do is... Like, Makes it easier. Who <laughs> right. ditched him? And then you can, you don't have to worry about finding that, that part in the book that you're needing right. to reference. Right. And, right. So that's... Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I should mention that people can actually purchase merchandise from the show. They can. So uh, is that um I'm I'm assuming that the, the the proceeds from the merchandise goes to help fund the show. Yeah. Uh it, it goes to, you know, getting us into film festivals if brought. We're in a weird place right now. Like I said this is it when I wrote it. I was like, ah, I'm done. Um but the outpouring of excitement has kind of been a little bit of a it's like catnip. Um Brought. so uh, a lot of people, like, immediately, the second we started see, uh, book two, they were like, what's book eight? And I was like, what? <laughs> there is no book eight. <laughs> the Duh. Um, but everybody's so enthused by it. And so I said, I was like, all right, look, if we get 10,000 subscribers, okay. Um, and, I mean, Tony, Tony the other day was like, like, last week, he was like, you know we're going to get that. And I was like, God. Rod. So I've started thinking about it, and once I start thinking about it, I start like, oh, we can do this book. Oh, oh, I know exactly. So all last week, I was bugging Dana, the transmedia producer, I was bugging the crap out of her, because I was like, do you think we could do this? Coming up with all these transmedia things just to keep myself from writing book eight. Right. So yes, me, like, the the answer to your question, the proceeds from the store, <laughs> small as they are, that was a tangent, uh, small as they are, would go to either back pay for people, mm -hmm. or, um, right. or more stuff, more episodes, or getting yeah. us into festivals, 
that kind of thing. We just found out. Oh, no, wait. I can't tell you that. Just kidding. Sorry. Oh, God, that was mean. That was so mean. Sorry. I promise I will tell you soon. <laughs> I can't tell you that. You can't bang so that sorry. in front of me. And then <laughs> yeah, but... Mm. We're on a panel. I can say this. We're on a panel for a thing, but they asked us not to officially announce anything yet, and uh, mm -hmm. and that's the end. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. No one's watching right now, so you can just. <laughs> um. Yeah. So yeah, I think people don't realize how important it is for these web series to have uh, donations sent their way because. You know, no one's getting paid. Right. And you definitely need the money to keep these things going. So if you like them, you know, it's important if you have the money to donate. And if you don't want to donate, there's always the merchandise. So right. it's always a cool um, thing. It's kind of a weird limbo because people are like, you're on, you're on TV, kind of. Um, so there must be money. Like, you must be able to find backers or advertisers or whatever. But... I don't think that backers and advertisers have quite figured out what to do with a web series, yeah. um, and especially small ones. And we are small. Like, you'll see vloggers with millions of followers. They get, like, trips places and free stuff, and people will pay them to stay in a hotel or whatever. Like, basically, they're a walking ad. Mm -hmm. But you don't have those kinds of no, you have to have millions of hits on a video to right. get that kind of attention. Um, which is hard to do with scripted material because YouTube sets uh, it content matters. So if mm -hmm. you're on YouTube, the more videos you have, the better you're gonna do, the higher up on their little like algorithm you will go. Right. But it takes you know, if, if you're doing scripted work it's going to be much more expensive to make than non-scripted, like, I'm just sitting right. here doing this. Right. And, you know? Right. It's, yeah, I mean, you have, like, a, a bigger budget and everything. Cause right. Because you, you've got you to gotta have some sort of set and, you know, the actors to play the characters. And, right. yeah, it's, you're, you're creating this, this make-believe world, and it's, it doesn't come cheap. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it also, like, uh, I was trying to retweet something for you. Did not work. There we go. Okay. Um, now that that's handled. <laughs> yeah, so we, and then we also, the post-production is actually more expensive than any, well, yeah, post-production, an editor, like, it's a lot of time to sit there and go through footage. Mm -hmm. So you got to pay these people. Um, and it's a lot of energy to, to put all of this stuff together. And, uh, yeah, so we have to have a, a budget instead of kind of like, oh, I can just sit in my living room and right. something. Um, yeah, because it's it's more than just, I mean, even though your series is in, in vlogging style, it's definitely more than just a regular vlog. There's a lot right. going on and behind the scenes that no guy. one sees. Right, we had a sound guy, we had a DP, we had can't, like a nice camera. Mm -hmm. um, we had art department, who I'm sure everybody everybody knows Katie. Uh, from the Pemberley stuff, uh, we had, I don't know, the transmedia, like, we just have a lot of extra things that, that kind of go into it, it's not just me and a camera. I right, mean, exactly, <laughs> even though it looks that way, you know, oh, there's... Makeup, a... makeup and hair, um, right. next time we'll, we'll have more, uh, I think, of a wardrobe, um, like department to kind of help with all that stuff because that was there's so many costumes, there's so so many. Um, so can people still donate to the show directly or is it? I feel like yes. I feel like if they email me, I will figure it, uh, figure something out. But um, there's like no button. There's no way to do it on YouTube. It's really clean. Yeah. Um, right. So I guess we can do like a PayPal kind of thing. I yeah. had this. Uh, I had this, like, all figured out, and then I forgot, because <laughs> um, no one has asked. But. Well, I had, I hadn't, I had not seen anything, um, no, yeah. nothing on the website or anything, so I didn't know if you were still um, accepting you donations. Always or... I think it would just be like, shoot me an email, and uh, and the email should be on the website. Um, yeah. Classic .series at gmail.com, um, and then people can can donate that way, and they'll yeah. 
Well, that that's good. So hopefully, you know, uh, more people will become aware of this show. Um, and you know, and watch hits, and donate and yeah. <laughs> hits help. Like watching it helps because um, we got shreds of a penny for every for every view, but we get something um, right. enough to help. Like you know, pay for somebody's gas or something. Um, yeah. Well, so every, yeah, every little bit helps. <laughs> totally. um, so, this is kind of off topic, but you have been acting since you were four, and what I read, know. it sounds like, I mean, it sounded like you had done, had, had been acting pretty consistently, um, but then you majored in history, so I was <laughs> <All right. What>? <laughs> curious <laughs> why history, you know, it's not, okay. <laughs> So, um, I mean, I, I love history. I think it's really mm -hmm. fascinating. I, it is the study of people, mm -hmm. uh, which is not that far off from acting. Right. But um, I was I was in school, and I was like, what can I what can I study that will graduate me in I, I graduated in three years, so I just wanted like, what's gonna get what how, what, how can I speed through this? Right. Um, and I already had like. I don't know, t eight credits in history and eight credits in anthropology. And I was like, mm, history. So it was sort of a, a whimsical decision. <laughs> um, I really did enjoy it. I like writing papers. I like researching things. I like um, I, I, I like ranting about I cannot watch. Ugh, I cannot watch historical, like, uh, TV shows or movies or whatever. It's just like, yeah. The yeah, well, rage. I heard that you and Tony were kind of in a thing about the Tudors show, but whether he should watch that. Thing. This poor guy innocuously asked. He was like, hey, I have a query for you. Would you mind if you answered, should I watch the Tudors? Right. And instead of like, nah, you could, you could skip it, or, oh yeah, it's really good. I went on like a rage quest. <laughs> not it was. Right. And then that became, I think he was like somewhat, he was just sort of letting it happen. So I yeah. didn't, I went through the whole Tudor dynasty and then started talking about the Stuart dynasty. And he was like, all right, now we're not even on the show anymore. Like this has escaped both of us. He walked the monster. <laughs> he did, he really did. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that that is my last name, so... <laughs> yeah, but in a, so I had to watch it, but yeah, it's not historically accurate. Okay. So they changed the name of the Pope. Why? No one would know that. I know, no one would know that. So why I'm was that important? That they, like, oh, they just sat in a boardroom and were like, "Can we piss off Kate?" Yes, right. you can. <laughs> this will get her. This will make her mad. So <laughs> let's, yeah, this will get under oh, her skin. <laughs> Yeah, I hate stuff like that when you know that it's wrong and, you know... There's just no reason for it. Like, I understand right. they squashed all of his sisters together so that they could only pay... or so that they would only have to pay one actress. Like, all right, fine. They weren't that big of a deal, I guess. Yeah. But... My brother's kind of like that, too. You know, he's a big <laughs> history buff and military history especially. And when he watches something, somebody is in uniform and they're... Uh, patches or something are on the wrong side or it's the wrong kind, it drives me so crazy. crazy. Huh, I'm sorry, it's, what? It just drives you crazy because they're just like, right. it's just lazy. It's just right, lazy. it's like, do your research, you know, before yeah. you know it's going to be on television, do your research. Go look it up. Right, go look it up. I mean, we have now, the internet. You can look we've ranted about this and right. now at some point, my stupid little show is going to make some stupid little mistake and someone's going to be right. like, why? So now you have to be extra careful not to <laughs> <laughs> no. double check He's gonna your, your comma splice somewhere. You're gonna right. freak out. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, so you were also an acting coach. Are you still doing that? Yeah, I mean, you you gotta ha have a day job, not to like shatter the illusion, but I tutor right. and I coach acting. Like you know, you kind of find um, ways to pay your bills. Right, exactly. So is that rewarding for you as an as an actor to be also an acting coach? Yeah, I mean it's it, it's a it's a job. So like it's it is fun. I do like I usually work with kids, uh, and it is really nice oh, to see them. Like, you know, yeah. like they just sort of get it, and then and then they realize this is really what I like. It's not about the you know 
uh, fame or whatever, uh, especially yeah. the teenagers, like getting them to go, oh, it's really fun to just experience stuff and really feel things yeah. and play around with your emotions without having to worry about, like, getting hurt. <laughs> you know, right, you, exactly. You can experience yeah, can, all this cool stuff. Yeah. I can see that working with, with kids would be really rewarding. Uh, I don't yeah. think if I was an acting coach and an actor, I don't think that I would want to work with people like my own age because there would always be some sort of like I don't know I would I would imagine there would be some sort of competition almost maybe I don't I yeah maybe I guess so um it depends on like like if I'm working with a friend of mine who's 27 and male or whatever like I'm not going out for anything he's going out for. Right, exactly. You know, um, I, I guess if I'm go if I'm working with someone who's exactly my type and they're getting audition after audition after audition, I might right. be like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> feel a little bit uh, yeah. threatened or yeah, competitive towards that person. Down on yourself, I think. Right. My, my gut reaction is not like, you suck. It's oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> it's like, right, uh, right, yeah. I, well, it sounds like you're a perfectionist, and that's the way that I am, too. So yeah. you kind of, everything is inward. Yes. So. Which is really yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, um. okay, so you are also uh, an author on the site Ms. in the Biz. Um, yes. Are you still doing that? I it, I had to take a, kind of a hiatus for the show. But, um, but, yeah, I've got a bunch of articles up on there. Yeah. So what sorts of things do you write about? For, for Ms. in the Biz, uh, mm -hmm. I had like a, I'm bummed at it, I had to pause, but I had kind of a behind the scenes of Classic Alice uh, thing. That's actually how I know Paula Rhodes from um, Peter and Wendy. Mm -hmm. Both, she, write, she writes on there too. Um, I've, wrote, I've written things like about, I don't even remember. <laughs> I was not prepared for this question. Uh, <laughs> things about like, Working in the business, acting, acting, work to, I don't know, just actor stuff, really. Mm -hmm. So kind it's of kind of like a, a community uh, to help Yeah, it's a community for out. women in the business, in the industry, um, to hopefully help, you know, where to, where to start, where to meet people, where to, what's, what's the best way to conduct yourself in, a, oh. in an audition, that kind of, like, the little things that nobody actually tells you. Um, right. Nobody tells you, don't shake the casting director's hand. Yeah. And, like, weird stuff like that. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like a support group, almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's also online and public, so like if, if you're, you know, say a 17-year-old kid sitting at home in Minnesota, you can be like, I would like to know more about this. What is this world like? Um, right. And you can kind of look it up and, and see. And it's not overwhelmingly positive, by which I mean like some of the authors do dive into kind of the like, this part sucks. <laughs> Some right. of it's hard, um, which I think is important because yeah, it would you kind of have to know what you're getting into. So sure, and I think it's a disservice to be like, "Yep, yeah, this is all wonderful." It's not. Right. Some of it's like, "Oh my god, why am I? What?" There's a lot of doubt. It's always, and that's any art industry. I think has that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weird not business. All yeah, yeah, it's definitely a weird business. Um, For sure. You mentioned earlier about. Uh, singing opera, and I didn't mention this earlier, but you were on, uh, you did like an iPad, iPhone app, singing opera? Yeah, yeah. What was um, that? That was a while ago. Um, a friend of mine had another friend who, uh, actually the, the friend who drew the little Classic Alice logo, uh -huh. one of her friends was developing an iPad app uh, for, uh, I think, kids, um, I wasn't super involved. I just did my little bit and, and right. was like, thank you. Um, but yeah, so I, I sang like one of the one of the little animal things. I was that voice yeah. and I and it, the thing sang. So I sang like if you yeah. press it, it sings little different things. So it'll be like if you press it really quickly, it'll just be like an ah, and then yeah. if you press it and hold it, it'll be like ah, 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 or whatever. Um, right. So I do that. Well, that's pretty cool. It seems like that would be fun to do. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It was quick. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so getting back to your writing, you've done so much stuff, I swear. I mean, I'm, you know, it's like <laughs> coming up with questions. I was like, where do I start? Oh, um, no. <laughs> you co-wrote and you star in the web series, uh, Kate and Joe Just Want to Have Sex. Yes, and um, it's not 
As rated R, as that title sounds. Right, the title yeah, makes it sound much worse. <laughs> right. Although I watched it, I mean, they're super short episodes, <laughs> like a minute long each one. Um, so how did that come about? I mean, where that? Where did you get the idea for that? I mean, it's not something that you. Joe, Joe was a to. friend of mine who was on an improv team with me, and mm -hmm. uh, we were chatting online one day, and I forget how it came up, but like. He's he's married, and I think I was seeing someone. Was I? I don't know. Um, but we were talking about just, like, as an adult, like, as a, when you're a teenager, you're like, oh, yeah, sex is going to be great. It's going to be all these wonderful things. And as an adult, you're like, oh, is this over? Or can we... <laughs> <laughs> like, you just wind up getting distracted by the minutia in your life. It's not anybody's yeah. fault. And that was something that I, I was like, I don't want anybody to be to blame for this stuff. It's just silly things that happen to you. Right. I was laughing. Um, and just like, this, the sorry sex one, that was real. That was a real thing that happened to me. Um, <laughs> right? The, the other ones, like, getting a migraine, like, totally happened. Like, just stuff that everybody's kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah. That was really funny with it. Both of you got migraines at the same time because he had a migraine. He talked about it. That triggered your migraine. Yeah. And, that was yeah. the first one that I wrote. He, that was the like we were just kind of chatting. We were like, yeah, you know, like what if you get a migraine and the other person gets a migraine? And I was like, that sounds hilarious. Let's write this. Right. It was I wrote that one, and I don't know a couple of the other ones. He wrote the YouTube one, and that was funny too. Like so, we we wrote we both split it up and we wrote a bunch, and uh, and then we just shot them in my house. Yeah. Um, the, really? the phone sex one was really funny, too. That was one of my favorites, I think, where you both ended up starting playing with the cats. I'm and shocked uh, that's not more popular because YouTube, it's sex right. and cats. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe now that if people are watching this and hear this, maybe they'll go and watch it. But, yeah, that was one of my favorite ones. I thought that was really funny because you just... It's like you totally forgot why you were on the phone to begin with. That's like... That totally happens. That would happen to me. <laughs> um, the the cat, we, we actually wrote, he, he has one cat, I have one cat. But when we were mm -hmm. shooting uh, his cat, I'm putting upstairs, we shot him upstairs. Uh, when we were shooting his scene, <laughs> he had the one cat, and then my other one, I have I have several, uh, this other one was like, I want to be in it too, and he kept like, I'm trying to get in. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> like, um... Very, very slutty, that cat. Right. He was really into it. Um, so we were like, well, now this character has two cats. Right. <laughs> around Dimitri. Right. Well, those were, it was, it's a funny series, so I hope that people will check that one out as well. No um, spoilers. And it's yeah. so, it's super fast to, yeah. you know, so you were done, are you done with that now, or are you planning to do yeah, that more? Yeah, that's done. That was like that's a one off real quick thing. Uh, yeah. We put it in Hollywood Festival, it did pretty well there, um, it, 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 yeah, but it was just like a sketch. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's, you know, it doesn't take long at all to watch. Each episode is like a minute, minute and a half, something like that. So that's that's something else I think a lot of people don't realize about these web series is it's, you know, you can watch two seasons in, in a couple of hours. It's not going to yeah. take a, it's not like a DVD collection of something that's on television, right. you know. It's not like that. It's not like Gilmore Girls on Netflix. Goodbye, everyone. Right. <laughs> Um, so aside from the Kate and Joe um, and classic Alice and partners in pretension, which we haven't even mentioned yet, uh, you were also involved in uh, Best Laid Plans. Yay! Um, yeah. So is that entire series still available on DVD? It's I don't know if it's on DVD. Uh, it was. It's on Hulu and their web. It might be on DVD. You know what I think it is? There's something on the website that said that it was... The entire series was on DVD, but I didn't know if it was still um, Probably. available. Uh, that's not. I didn't produce it, so like I don't. I don't you know don't know what it. happened after. <laughs> yeah, but so, um, but that was an all improv series. So they would yeah. give us like a scenario and some points to hit, and we would go and do it. And um, right. yeah, it was it was really it was fun. It was tough because I was the straight man. Like right. everyone else was kind of <laughs> goofy, and I was like. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it was a good time. It was really fun. Yeah. Well, it's a fun show. I mean, and I was gonna ask you if you had like a if there were you know like scenarios that you had to follow, or if it was all just uh, like you sort of jumped in. And... Well, I mean, because you, it, 
Yes, uh, there are scenarios that you have to follow, and uh, you, there were certain plot points that they'd want us to hit, which I used a little bit of that, like, technique, I guess, with Alice. Like, if Tony was like, I'm not going to say this, like, he does. No. Right. If people were like, this, let's, let's just riff for a little bit, it would be like, all right, yeah, but let's make sure that we hit this, this, and this. Like, you can screw your lines, you can, you know, mess them up and do whatever you want, but just make sure that you get this moment and this moment and see what happens. Right. Um, which makes me sound like a lot more fun than I'm sure I am on set. I'm kind of a pain, but <laughs> uh, I just, like, I got so many words. Um, but Best Laid Plans was really, really fun because it was just reacting and playing with your with your other actors. There was no, um, you didn't know what was going to happen next, so everything was very honest and open and... There were some really sweet moments coupled with some really funny moments. Uh, for some reason, we this rinky-dink little web series got an amazing shot of the sunset over mm-hmm. San Diego, like just this like crazy pretty shot in the episode where the interview, I think it is, where I take mm-hmm. him to meet my dad, um, the sweater vest episode. So yeah, well, that's a real and you know something about improv. It's it's always good to do that as an actor to. It, it's a good exercise. Yes. And it's fun. Um, I like it. Right. It's fun. Well, um, so, you know, we've talked about you being a writer and producer and all this other stuff. So is there anything that you find most creatively fulfilling out of all of those? Out of those? Hmm. I think, I think acting mm-hmm. for me. Because you can do it and then it's kind of done. And when it's works, it's amazing. Right. Um, writing you can tinker with forever. Like, mm-hmm. I have friends who have worked on the same thing for years, and, like, for me, I couldn't do that. It's like, mm-hmm. this is it, this is, like, I've made wow. this thing, time to turn it in. Um, I don't know, but they, they're, they hit different things, though, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, writing is, is a much more involved process. I mean, it's I don't it know, man. I don't of... think I'm reading some of my scripts. <laughs> um, <laughs> writing, I don't know. I wouldn't say one is more involved than the other. They're mm-hmm. different, but they're yeah. very similar. Um, knowing how people talk and how people act is really important. This is getting very artsy, everyone. Um, so, like, when I when I get a script as an actor, and I think I sent the script, like, to the Kickstarter backers with all my notes mm-hmm. on it, um, mm-hmm. which I'm sure some people, I, I think someone was like, what does this mean to a bunch of them? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but when I get a script, like, I break it down, and I look for the thing that I'm doing. What, what do I need? Who? What do I need from this person? Um, what's happening in the scene? Like, where, where do I change my tactics? I do all this crazy stuff, and it takes, like, it takes a little while, especially if it's really detailed and really layered. And if I haven't written the script... I mm-hmm. really have to do that to make sure that I know the character and I know what the writer's looking for. Also, when you're an actor, you kind of have to anticipate what the producers, the directors, the writers, whoever, what they need, but you also don't want to do that because they don't know what they need. So you just got to go. It's like it's so many conflicting, like, so you kind of to take a well, breath. And, and, just... and I read that when you're writing, you, you tend to, like, <laughs> put yourself in each character <laughs> and act yeah, out. I'm, really, I'm like, I'm so, typing, I'm like talking like Andrew. It's like, oh yeah, right. you jerk off or whatever the lines were. Right. And, uh, and then I'm Kara's easy. Kara's very easy. Yeah. Alice, pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, but then, you, then when you're doing Andrew, you have to get in the the guy mindset. So yeah. Ewan's first speech was actually the hardest. The like. I I woke from a dream that I was in Mandabeth and king of everything or whatever it was. Um, yeah, crusher. <laughs> uh, that was hard because I was like, I don't want to write a nerd with a, like, I don't want to write a nerd. I don't want to mm-hmm. write a stereotype. I don't want to write a right. Big Bang or yeah, no, yeah, Big Bang Theory nerd. I don't want right. to write that. Right. I want to write this guy that I totally know, who played you know Dungeons and Dragons and Warcraft too long. <laughs> um, Without, without like, mocking him, you know? Right. I mean, this is a very fine line, especially with the audience that we have of, like... And also it was a fine line because we were hinting at what he was to become, 
the whole right. time. Yeah. But we didn't want to be like, hey, guys, hey, guys, like, right. throwing it at you. So mm -hmm. if you go back and rewatch them, there mm -hmm. are these, like, clues along the way. Um, so in addition to giving him an honest male voice, I had to give him an honest male dork voice and give him, an like, all of these peppered, you know, like, Liars. King of Kings and stuff like that. Like, from day one, his, his like... The lower third was King of Kings, and some like no one, no one was like, "Wait, that's weird." Yeah, that's Jesus, <laughs> what is this guy? <laughs> um, so we had all of these gags kind of floating around, ready to. I love that about this show. Actually, it was like how much I get to be like, "Did yeah. you see that?" Because <laughs> yeah. it's important later. Yeah, um, <laughs> make sure you're yeah, paying attention so here. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so acting you find most creatively fulfilling, and I was looking over your resume, and oh. under skills you have archaeology. Yes. That's, I, that I, seemed I, random to me, too, so. Uh, I was actually on the archaeological team uh, that helped dig the Jamestown settlement mm -hmm. in Virginia. Yeah. Um, they realized that the Palisades were not where they originally thought they were, and so there was this big dig, uh, not the one in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. There was a, a big effort to, you know, make sure that we knew where things were, so we, we dug up a bunch of stuff, like buttons. I, I think I found some buttons, some very old buttons. Um, and, and years later, I was visiting home, and my, my favorite thing to do when I go home is go to D.C. and go to the museums, mm -hmm. and... Also, I love my family, but my favorite thing is the museum. I got other museums. <laughs> uh, so I was there, and <clears throat> the Natural History Museum was always my favorite growing up. And I was like, ah, da -da 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 -da. and I saw a banner, and it said Jamestown Settlement Exhibit, like it was a big special exhibit. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me, like I didn't know this was there. And I saw the banner, and I was like, wait. <gasps> So I ran up to the, I was like, there, floor, there, floor. You go in, it's all this stuff that, like, this was the thing that I dug when I was really little, like, 13 or 12 or however old I was. This is the thing yeah. I did. And I was walking around, I was like, oh, look at this. And this poor woman, like, you know, you kind of hit the same people when you're in an exhibit. So, like, right. this woman next to me, I was like, yeah, the whole time. Like, I did this. You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> when you hit this, like, you know, women, you can tell if they've had children based on their hip bones if right. when they die. Yeah. And I knew that. But I did not know how. You can mm -hmm. tell. So we hit this thing where it explains how an archaeologist can tell if a woman has had children mm -hmm. in more detail than I have perhaps encountered. Right. And uh, what happens is your hips split apart. Did you know this? I didn't know no. this. So mm -hmm. I'm like flopping <laughs> around like, yeah, I did this, I did this. Kunk. Whoa. And the woman next to me goes, you didn't know that, did you? And I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> so she was very happy. She was right. like, because <laughs> I was being very annoying, I'm sure. <laughs> and just the, oh. Mm -mm. Well, um, you know, yeah. I guess the, the archaeology thing kind of goes in with the history thing. So it, you know, from that aspect, I can see why that would be. I love it. I love, like, looking at old stuff. But actually, archaeology is a lot of math. Um, right. and a lot of calculating where you might find, like, a midden pile and stuff like that, which was yeah. less exciting than, like, actually digging. Digging, but. yeah. I would much prefer the digging part over the calculating <laughs> yeah. part. So. Or, or the, like, wandering around an exhibit in the Smithsonian, like... <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so, changing the subject again, uh, tell me about uh, Real Rob. Is that still in the works? Uh, it's not, again, not my project. That was Rob Schneider's project, yeah. so I'm not really sure actually how much I can say. I booked, I booked okay. a project with Rob Schneider. Right, <laughs> that's, that's, right, and it's um, real Rob, so. Right, that's his thing. I, I'm not really yeah. sure where, where it's going or what they're doing with it. Okay, <laughs> but have you, you've already filmed a couple I of I filmed episodes? it, it has not aired, so that's kind of all yeah. I can. I'll have to, to look. To keep an eye out for it and look to see, yeah. you know, when it's I mean, going to air. Right. So hopefully, it's like a TV co-star role, right? Yeah. Well, maybe you know you can tell me more about it once <laughs> once it airs. Yeah, I once think once it I mean, airs, you can tell me more about it. Um, 
so that is that is all of my questions. But okay. we do have a question from the audience. Oh, hello. Um, well, somebody says, hi, Kate. Thanks for doing this question and answer. This is from Kay Abdegrove. And then somebody says, will we be seeing the bookstore trip and or Halloween party, or will it take place off camera between episodes? Um, the bookstore trip... Um we didn't film, obviously, <laughs> because I'm like, mm -hmm. um, that the the Halloween party is off camera. Uh, well, kind of. You'll see. Um, mm -hmm. The bookstore trip we did not film, but I don't know that. I I think in character in world, I don't think they ever go, mm -hmm. um, because the end of the season is such a bummer, such a letdown. I don't think Andrew would like. Hey, remember how you won and that guy was a jerk? <laughs> you know? And she's right, exactly. excited by it. So I think it's and they had that weird moment. So it's kind of off the table at the moment. I don't think they're going. Oh, okay. Well, but, that is that's all the questions. Unless you have oh, some one add. question. There was one question and one comment. So I think I think sometimes there's not a a lot of people don't know that you can do the questions during the show. Yeah. Um, I usually, I think the last time we did this, uh, we just had like a hashtag on Twitter. Right. And people, like, would yeah, I'm gonna have to do that the next time. Yeah. Do like a Twitter thing if I can figure out how to do this and keep up with Twitter at the same I think, time. Yeah, I think you'd need like another person to. Right. I need someone <laughs> keeping up with Twitter while I'm asking the questions and stuff. For but, sure. Right. Uh, but I mean, do you have anything to add? Maybe something I left out that we should mention. No, really, just thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> yeah. Um, the show and, and this and the show. And uh, I keep sharing, man, because, all I mean, word of mouth has been our godsend. We, our yeah. Kickstarter, when we were doing crowdfunding, we, mm -hmm. we weren't going to make it. It was yeah. just, we were not. Yeah. It, the, I think, like, the first couple of, the first week we did, like, okay, mm -hmm. and then there was seriously nothing yeah. for the next two weeks. And then, wow. like, a trickle here or there. And yeah. we were dead in the water. And uh, I think the Lizzie Bennett people finally found us and, like, just exploded. And it was really cool because it was, mm -hmm. like, we were all a little, like, all right, well, that's, from you know, my actors were kind of like, all right, well, whatever. But uh, um, Elise was tweeting. Actually, no, I'm, I'm kidding. That's not how. They, it, it felt very, like, mm. But, um. But they were they were helping a lot. Elise was tweeting and like Tony was mm -hmm. pushing for things and everybody was posting links and whatnot. But um, but you know at the end of the day it's sort of like all right, well that didn't work or oh yeah we did it. Um, yeah. it was kind of a bummer because I'd like I got all excited about it, which I was trying very hard not to do. You're gonna learn this about me. I try very hard to be like no, I'm not even gonna think about it. I don't right. care, whatever. And then I'm like, Wait, but what if? Right. What if? <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm excited. Uh, so I. I was good until like the third week of that Kickstarter when everything was dead, and then I started. I was like, "Oh, I know what book I want to do." Mm -hmm. Crap! So I got all excited. There was nothing, and then all of a sudden it, it came back, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> well, well, I'm glad that it has. I mean, I'm like, you know, obviously, you know that I'm a, a huge fan of the show, and actually, I put uh, classic Alice images. Uh, on Tuesdays, I do, like, a web series caption contest on my Facebook page. Oh. So I include Classic Alice. You know, oh, cool. I, I sort of have it in the mix. So we do that, Love too. It. So hopefully that will... Those those go over pretty well, so hopefully that will uh, just, draw I mean, everybody's, everybody helps with just, like, oh, I really love this show. Watch mm -hmm. it or whatever. And you guys are so good about sharing stuff. And, um, and the fan interaction's been really cool. I emailed the cast and crew... Uh, a couple weeks ago, and was just like, I don't think you guys see this because mm. you know they're not manning the Twitter, or they're not on yeah. the thing. Or whatever. It's like I don't think you see this outpouring of excitement, mm -hmm. and I just want you to know, like, all the crazy hard work that because it's a lot of work. It's like a job. Yeah, um, exactly. It's totally people are super reacting to it, so it's yeah. that's cool too. So. Yeah, well, you know. These shares and, you know, interviews like this and that sort of thing, That's I think that's really important for web series because it's not like TV where there's no promos airing or anything like that. So, 
yeah, it's, right. it's important. And actually, when I first discovered the show, um, I think I was going through my uh, uh, follow following list uh, on Twitter to see who I was following, and uh, your name came up, and I was like, well, who's that? Why am I following her? And I looked, and I was like, oh, she's doing Classic Alice. That's one of the web series that I have yet to watch. So oh, I watched it, and I was like, I love this show. This is this is such a good show. It's so, so uh, that's That's how it, <laughs> it came up with the, you know, the, the review that I did and all that other stuff. So, awesome. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always discovering new series, and, and I like... Crazy. Yeah, but and I like to... Right. I like to uh, spread the word about the ones that are good, because there are a lot out there, and they're not all good, so I, I like to try to promote the ones that that are worth well, thank watching. You very so. much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, Kate, I hate to like cut this off because you're so much fun to talk to, but <laughs> we've been talking for over an hour. Oh uh, my goodness. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, well, thank you so much for having uh, yeah, me and, absolutely. and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And if if anyone else on the cast wants to be interviewed, I'm then on, I bet they do just tweet at them and be like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" Yeah. I think they will yeah. say yes. Yeah. And then, well, you know, I will hopefully you can come back at some point and yeah. you know talk to me about your other projects and and classic Alice. So uh, oh, yeah. I've gotta oh, gotta watch today's confessional. I haven't watched it yet. So <laughs> oh, it's me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the first one you've done, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Ooh, okay. Great. Well, have fun. I hope you like it. I'm hitting things. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I, I know that I took a quite a large chunk of your time tonight, but it's your fault because you've done so much. So yeah. <laughs> my fault. Victim yeah. blaming. That's what right, we call Exactly. Okay. Well, it's I'll cool like... Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.